How y'all doing? Uh, my name is Tevin Campbell. At the age of 12, Tevin Campbell was featured on Quincy Jones' 1989 album, Back on the Block. A solo career later catapulted the Texas native to the top of the Billboard charts. He was marketed as a teenage heartthrob and was well on his way to becoming an international superstar. Unfortunately, the Grammy-nominated singer's life was spiraling out of control behind the scenes. An embarrassing arrest would tarnish his image and compel him to walk away from the industry. Here's what really happened to Tevin Campbell's career. Tevin grew up singing in a gospel choir in Waxahachie, Texas. He was content with singing in obscurity. However, his mother Rhonda, who was one of the best gospel singers at the church, had other plans for him. Tevin told the LA Times his mom encouraged him to step out and be a solo singer away from the choir. He said, without her pushing, I'd still be in the background. With some help from mutual friends, Rhonda arranged for Tevin to audition for jazz performer Bobby Humphrey over the phone. Bobby was so impressed that she set up a New York showcase for Tevin. The recording of that performance was seen by Michael Jackson, who flew Tevin, his mom, and his brother out to Neverland Ranch for lunch. Tevin told I Miss the Old School website that Michael wanted to get Tevin signed to a label, but it never happened. With Bobby acting as his manager, Tevin landed his first major role as a replacement on Wally and the Valentines. Singer Saida Garrett was impressed by Tevin's performance and spoke about his potential to Quincy Jones. Record executive Benny Medina suggested Quincy use Tevin's vocals on his upcoming album. And once Quincy heard Tevin sing, he agreed and signed him to his Quest record label. Quincy had high hopes for his new protege. He said in an interview, I've seen Michael Jackson at 12 and Stevie Wonder at 12. Tevin could be just as big a star. Tevin, his mom, his younger brother, and his older sister left Texas behind and moved into a home in Encino, California. To get his feet wet in the industry, Quincy had Tevin sing the lead vocals on the song Tomorrow for Quincy's 1989 Back on the Block album. The album shot straight to the top of Billboard's R&B chart. Next, it was time for Tevin to record his own album. T-E-V-I-N was released in 1991 and went platinum, thanks in part to the songs Tell Me What You Want Me To Do and Alone With You. Everyone wanted to collaborate with Tevin at that point, he was featured on the soundtrack for Prince's movie Graffiti Bridge, and he even made a guest appearance on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. He told I Miss the Old School website he started hanging around a lot of older people in the industry. They would invite him to their house parties, and even though he was 14 and didn't have a driver's license, he would drive himself to every party. At the age of 14, he also began drinking and would frequently drive while inebriated. He hinted that he had a darker side in a 1991 interview with the LA Times. Tevin said, I have done some bad things, things I can't and won't talk about. There was no time for him to get caught up in his new Hollywood lifestyle. Not only was he still a high school student at private San Fernando Valley Institution, but he had a recording contract and dreams to fulfill. He told the LA Times he wanted to be a bigger star than Michael Jackson one day. He added, I like the power, the money, the opportunities for girls, and girls, and more girls. Quincy Jones brought together an all-star team of producers and songwriters, including Prince, Babyface, and Johnny Gill, to create songs for Tevin's 1993 sophomore album, I'm Ready. Even though Tevin was still a teenager, Prince was ready for the young star to experiment with a more mature sound. Prince wrote the song, Shh which included lyrics like, I'd rather do you after school like some homework. The suggestive content and Tevin's growls on the track caught many of his fans by surprise. He told Vibe magazine that recording the song was very uncomfortable, so he and Prince had to reach an agreement during the recording sessions. Everyone was kicked out of the studio, the lights were shut off, and the curtains were drawn to help a young Tevin get in the zone. The song was never officially released as a single, so fans had to buy the entire album in order to hear the racy lyrics. Fans also fell in love with the lead track, I'm Ready, which landed at number nine on the Billboard chart. 
Then, Tevin released back-to-back hits with Can We Talk and Always In My Heart. He wound up receiving three Grammy nominations for all of his hard work. Tevin returned in 1996 with the album Back to the World, which was produced by Puff Daddy. Sadly, the album was a huge disappointment and it barely peaked at number 11 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums chart. He wasn't about to give up on his singing career, though. In February 1999, he released a self-titled neo-soul project that featured Wyclef John, Faith Evans, and Coco of SWV. No amount of star power could stop the album from flopping, and it landed at number 31 on the Billboard chart. In an interview, Tevin said that at the time, he couldn't understand why his albums progressively got worse and worse. He had experienced immense success as a child, and to have it all taken away from him while he was in his early 20s was pretty traumatic. He said he had to step away from the business, and unfortunately, that included a period of rebellion. Nine months after his fourth self-titled album was released, Tevin was driving around the San Fernando Valley while under the influence. He drove to Van Nuys Elementary School and solicited an undercover policeman during a sting operation. According to the Associated Press, Tevin was locked up and ordered to attend Narcotics Anonymous meetings and an AIDS awareness class. He was also fined $1,080 for the misdemeanor conviction after pleading no contest. He later told I Missed the Old School website he was using multiple substances at the time. Because the officer involved was a man, he added that even though the incident has left many people to speculate and spread rumors, he didn't care what they thought about him. What many of his fans don't realize is Tevin got into a lot more trouble after that incident. He said he went to jail again and did some really bad stuff. It just never made the news. During a 2003 interview with Sister to Sister magazine, he denied being gay but allegedly admitted to being a freak. When asked if he enjoyed both men and women, Tevin reportedly stated, He made somewhat of a comeback in 2005 when he appeared in the Broadway musical Hairspray as the character Seaweed J. Stubbs. Tevin called the experience the greatest three years of his life. In May 2008, he released an internet album entitled 2008 Never Before Heard through Rambo House Media. But after six months, Tevin reportedly decided to pull the material from online sites. He made a rare appearance at the 2009 BET Awards, and his fans were sure a comeback album was on the way. But that same year, Tevin said in an interview he had no interest in ever signing another record contract. He said, the music industry is really not the place for me to be right now. The years passed by, and Tevin all but disappeared from the public eye. In 2014, he changed his thoughts about being tied to another recording contract. He signed with Spectra Music Group, and it was reported that a new album was finally on the way. In a 2016 Jet Magazine interview, Tevin talked about the release of his song, Safer on the Ground. He also announced it would be featured on his fifth studio album. But as of this video, the album has yet to be released. And in 2019, Tevin landed a guest role on season four of the own series, Queen Sugar, and Tevin's name was once again trending in the media. But this time, it was for all the right reasons. He expressed his excitement in this Facebook video. Hey, I don't know what y'all doing, but I know what I'm doing and where I'm at. I'm on the set of Queen Sugar, baby. Tevin was a child star who planned on being a permanent fixture in the industry. But he now realizes that getting away from the music business was crucial to his survival. Once he stepped away from the industry and spent more time around his family, he said he was finally able to kick his substance abuse habit. In the end, he said he loves receiving Facebook messages from all of his fans who still love and adore him. And even though he disappeared from the industry, his musical contributions will be celebrated for many generations to come. Let us know if you're surprised by the outcome of Tevin Campbell's music career. And thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.